Hey everybody, Barry here again. Yesterday I got some stuff done for the turbo drain. This finished up. Steering column stuff is good. Steering worked really well actually. And I got some more parts today. Not necessarily a lot, but a couple bolts for the front cradle mounts up here on the rad support. My oil feed lines. This is 3.8 NPT, half inch barb. So that'll work a lot better than the big old half inch NPT ones. And a couple turbo bolts, that kind of thing, nothing serious. But it's Friday, first day of the weekend, which means I can do a big project. And what I'm gonna do is see if I can get the rear end put in the van. Obviously I have to start with taking the old axle out of the van, which should only be probably a half an hour and that'll be on the floor. And then I can bring up the other nine inch that I have cut the ladder bar brackets out of that and size up the ladder bar, see if they're gonna work on this. Make up shock mounts, cut springs probably, because there's a drop axle on the van, which goes down probably six inches. Meaning that when I put a straight axle on the van, it's gonna be like six inches higher than it is now, and that ain't gonna fly. So I'll probably have to cut the springs or heat them up, or just use the coilovers that I have, which are not what you call QA1 adjustable coilovers. It's literally old drag shocks with springs clamped onto them. And this van is a lot heavier than the drag car was, so it's probably not gonna work, but we'll see how it goes. Bring up shock brackets and do the brakes and all that stuff. But then after I get all that put in this weekend, I can finally bolt on the new wheels. And I can't wait to see them on there because I'm sick and tired of looking at steel rims and hubcaps. So anyway, let's get the van on the ramp and see what we can accomplish. Got the van on the ramp, ready to haul the rear end out. And I brought in a couple parts. Here's the nine inch with the brackets that I need. So I'll grab the plasma cutter and snick it around here. That's all good. I'll take that and just cut these brackets off. Cut off those shock brackets on the back. That is heavy. These are obviously homemade but they were on a local drag car and they made hundreds of passes. I am gonna clean them up, calm down the welds here a little bit, go over and make sure there's no cracks or anything, and then I'll paint them up. All righty, game plan time. Not actually a lot to pull the axle out of this thing. And under here we have four bolts up here to pull off the trailing arm. I'm not going to bother taking this bushing out because I don't need to. And it's probably going to be more work because these like to seize in a lot. Four bolts hold the shock mount in place. And then I'll probably just pull out this bolt for the panhead bar, or maybe I'll unbolt the bracket just in case it gets in the way of the diff. And I'll deal with cutting all this garbage out here when I get that far. I think it'll all come down in pretty much one piece. I'll take off the park brake cables and the brake lines themselves. Uh, I think I'll just unbolt it from the caliper here. I'll let the caliper and all come down in one shot. Should only be a half an hour or so I should have it down unless every bolt twists off and spins around in the body. You got a plasma cutter for that. That went so well. You know what that means? Something's gonna catch fire before the night's out. Man, what a trailer axle that would make. Tyler, do you wanna make a wood cart? <laughs> yeah. This thing is pretty neat, actually. 
trailing arms all there. I think I might reuse these mounts or at least use them as some sort of a template to make my own mounts here because this is about eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little bit thicker. I'm gonna do quarter. I'll definitely do something with these shock mounts because it'd be hard to make these or at least make them that well. They're very thick too. They're eighth inch. Pan hard bar bracket is there. If I need to, I can lengthen or shorten this bar or even bend it. I'm so glad this van's not rusty. I'm used to working on a rat rod. And I spent two years just fixing rust in a rat rod. And it still looks like a rusty old truck. So it's nice to see that everything here still has paint on it. I have no idea how a 2014 Newfoundland vehicle isn't rusted through anywhere. But I'm so glad. And I also just found out that one of my park brake cables was broken. And zip tied to the axle. Just put in its normal routing, zip tied on. So we've only had this van like two years. I'm the only one who's done any work on it. Bought it from the car dealership like it. Lovely. Here we can really plainly see the drop. Middle of the wheel bearing is right here. This would serve as the middle of my axle. All the way down here is a spring perch. So we're talking four or five inches for sure. It's not gonna be particularly easy to do this because the spring tapers into a tighter coil at the bottom. And I'm not a big fan of cutting a spring like halfway through its travel point because then we don't have a flat spot on a spring. I'll come up with something there. Whether I use springs out of the rat rod or use my old coil over or something like that. I'll come up with a plan. I think before I go any further, I'm gonna lay the rear end up on this little table I got set up, bolt the rims to it, and see if they're gonna be out flush with the fender like the front, or if I'm gonna to have to buy wheel spacers. I like to know that early enough, so if I order the spacers now, they should be in in a week or so. Actually, this table's really high. I think I'll set the rear end up on jack stands and lower the van right down to its level. I think that'll be a lot more sensible. I don't know if Cass could have done a better job picking out these wheels. To find the same matching set of wheels for two different bolt patterns. The rear here being Ford five on five and three eighths. The front is five on 114.3 because of the Dodge pattern. To find the two exact same rims with different offsets so that the wheel comes out just about perfectly flush with the fender on the back. And the same on the front, just about perfectly flush with the fender. Not have them sitting in too far, not have them sitting out too far, like perfect. And an eight inch wide set of rims so that they don't hit the struts, but it's got a nice wide rim in the back and the front. The front rims were sevens. Well, I guess both on the van anyway, were seven inches wide and these are eights. And she found the perfect set of offset that they're flush with the fender and not in too far. So it's got a real nice wide stance without sticking out past the fender, that kind of thing. And what a wicked job. And found them on clearance. So we got them for like basically nothing. <laughs> so that's perfect. I've been doing a little bit of sizing up and it looks like these ladder bars are gonna fit basically perfect. I'm gonna make my own brackets here, like I said, but they're pretty much the perfect length. Now, of course, this is all just laid in place and I'm just looking at it and stuff. 
But it's so cool how everything is bolted on. No brackets are welded to the van. The shock brackets are here. I'm thinking about potentially using these old coilovers that came out of the same drag car for a bit of extra weight support. Mostly because I'm putting extra, a lot of power in this thing. And when I gun it, I'm afraid the van is gonna to squat too much. So it'd be nice to have that extra little bit of spring support. Plus we always carry people and weight in the van and tow trailer with it and stuff. So it's nice to have. It might be kind of hard to see this, but the original spring perch is right here. And we can see of course that this is a straight axle. So the springs would, sitting right here, would make the van a whole lot higher than it should be. And what I've been looking at is potentially using this cross brace here and making a bracket so that the spring sits right in front of the axle. That way I can make a plate come out and have a spring perch on here at whatever height I want. That way I can set the ride height on the van, weld everything together and forget about it. And that way, the shock brackets would still be able to bolt in here fine because the springs would be inside of this frame rail. And the ladder bars still bolt in right up here and come back to the rear end. And we got nothing in the way. That's the way I'm looking at so far. We'll see. So I'm pretty much out of time for tonight. Got a lot of stuff figured out. Had a couple of buddies over, Frampton and Rodney and Snow, helping me figure some stuff out like spring location pan hard bars rear end location all that stuff it's nice to have a handful of people around saying maybe you should do it this way or you know different ideas and stuff so it's pretty cool i'm all finished up for tonight tomorrow i'm going to get at nailing down the placement of the rear end pan hard bar brackets stuff like that and uh, it's going to be big Hopefully by the end of the weekend, or definitely by the end of the weekend, because it's got to move, I'll have the van down on its wheels. So, good stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night.